So we're now entering into the final stage here in the mixing process, at least in the way we've been going about it thus far. And that final stage is mix reverb. So before going to mix reverb, at least for me, what I've found over time in practice is to only apply it at the very end. I want to make sure that my mix sounds good enough without it and that the mix reverb is there really as a very subtle enhancement, something that I almost perceive more than necessarily hear. That being said, this is a good time to maybe turn things up even a little bit more so that you're able to hear that detail. I have gone in and I have changed the settings on the snare verb a little bit, and I even went in and automated the amount that's being sent to it. So let's listen to what we have right now, and we're going to then go in and work with our mix reverb. Whatever you give is So with the mix reverb, we can think back to the presentation from two videos ago, and we're really talking about putting a lot of these parts into the same space as a final form of cohesion. If you've done a good enough job with your blend EQ, if you've done a good enough job with how you've approached compression and other uh, elements that might be bringing things together, then the mix verb may not be that important. But if things are a little bit off, this can have a huge impact. With the limited instrumentation we have here and with kind of the smart choices we've made along the way, I don't think that the mixing reverb is going to have the biggest impact here, but I'm still going to apply it and think about what do I want to do with it. So with this mix in particular, I don't want something that's going to be ringing out. I probably don't want to put this in a hall. I more so want to put this in a room with a pretty short reverb time on it because I don't want the reverb um, masking or hiding or potentially... Uh, flooding out other parts, and you can use any adjective there you want. So I have to ask the question, first of all, what reverb do I want to go with? And that's not an easy question. I mean, luckily, we only have a couple of uh, reverb choices, but even within those choices, we have a lot of options and additional parameters we can mess around with. So the first option might be to go with, for example, the towel reverb. The issue that I have with the towel reverb is that it's not emulating an actual space. This is more of a specialty reverb. It's more of a plate kind of sound to me. And so I don't think I'd want to put everything through a plate here at the end. I don't think that's going to bring things together. I think that's more likely going to just wash everything out. So I'm going to get rid of the tall reverb. It might work in some instances. I don't think it's going to work here. And so the next option I could go to is let's try the old school verb and let's go with a preset, okay? This is a perfect time to use a preset. I'm not even gonna go in and tweak anything. I just wanna look and see what would make the most sense here. So I'm looking for rooms, specifically real spaces. So we have bright studio, warm hall, grand hall, empty stage, that might work quite well. Um, nice hall, I don't know what the difference is between nice, warm, and grand, but I guess you could m uh, mess around with that. Here's a master mix reverb a big reflective room, vintage plate, whatever. So why don't we go and since there's a preset called Master Mix Reverb, let's try it out, okay? Let's see what the settings look like. Ah, very interesting, a very long pre-delay here. They've left the EQ completely off, which I like. Let's look and see if there's anything really crazy. Yeah, this should be about as smooth as you can get with a little bit of pre-delay to try to emphasize that space, right? So you want the music to kind of hit you first and then have the reflections and the reverb come in a little bit later. So let's just make sure we turn off the dry amount. We'll bring this up to zero for now. And I think what's going to make the most sense for us is to go into the mix view here and kind of solo out our parts and just go one by one and hear how much we can give. How much can we put into this mix verb before it sounds like it's just too much? So let's start with the vocal here. Whatever you give is what you give. What and I can tell just from listening actually to these settings. I really like this. This is going to work well as our um, mixing reverb. But I could also go in just as a comparison and uh, turn this off and instead use the K Research uh, reverb. This one doesn't give us any kind of preset, so we're going to have to mess around with it on our own. And I'm going to do it just relative to the vocal here and see if I can come up with something that I think would work well as a glue. Obviously, these settings are put to the extreme, so we're going to pull back on this hardcore but just for now, to try to get the settings, it helps to listen at kind of a louder volume. Whatever you give 
So what I'm actually doing here is positioning the listener a little bit farther back into space because this is going to be used so subtly. So we want it to be a little bit more of an enveloping, a cohesive sort of feel as compared to that really distinct delay that we were going with when we were just processing and working with something like the vocal, for example, where we had it right at the top. Whatever you give is what you give. Whatever you give is what you give. Whatever you give is what you give. Whatever you give. Is so what I'm thinking is, I like the old school verb, but I want to bring the time down considerably. Whatever you give is what you give. Whatever you give. So in my opinion, it's a tough call here. I think I'm going to go with the old school verb. And then if I need to go back and adjust the settings a little bit, I will. The nice thing about this reverb. Whatever you give is what you give. Is that we can kind of get a really sort of short decay time that still sounds okay. The problem is with the reflections, it's almost like you can hear those audible delays happening, like, you know, the early reflections versus the reverb. And that's not really something that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to commit to my decision of using the old school verb. And we're going to go back and then start to send our parts into it a little bit. So let's just get it started here. Whatever you give is what you give. Whatever you give is what you give whatever you give okay is what this is all being set to taste now you give there's no right or wrong whatever you give is what and i actually think the chimes stand up well to quite a bit of this whatever you give is what you gave whatever Trying to you kick gave drum. is what so what you can hear with the kick drum is that we're really getting that grainy kind of effect coming through it's not smooth enough so i think i might just leave this out or try putting on just a really small amount and seeing uh, if we still are hearing that kind of like uh, distortion kind of crackling coming through whatever you gave is what you gave whatever you gave is what I'm just gonna leave it out whatever you gave is what you gave whatever you gave is what and again this part might actually stand up well to a little bit more being fed in. Whatever you give is what I mean, not that much, but. You give whatever you give is what you give whatever you give is what And so if we really go in and crank this up, we can actually hear kind of the balance that we've set and see if we need to make any changes. Whatever you be is whatever you be is what I'm actually pretty happy with that. And again, I'm not looking for some kind of night and day difference. If you've done a good enough job with your mix, you're not going to hear a night and day difference.